Hey everyone, God bless you and thanks for tuning in. I have a, a prayer request that I'd like to make of you. My heart is grieved as are the hearts of all people who know what's going on today in the Ukraine with regards to the incredibly sad and abhorrent persecution of Christians that's going on in the Ukraine by the Ukrainian government. I'd like to ask for your prayers, especially on this day, uh, the 23rd of March, which happens to be the feast day of the righteous Nikon of the Lavra of the Kiev Caves in the Ukraine, which is the very epicenter of uh, the persecution that is going on right now by the state government against innocent Orthodox Christians who have no political axe to grind at all. Uh, hundreds of monks that live there at the Lavra, one of the most revered and holy monasteries uh, in the entire world, uh, ancient. Monks have been living the faithful Christian life there for a thousand years and more. These same monks are uh, being horrendously persecuted. And I'd like to read to you a letter of supplication for prayer uh, and assistance that was just posted by Bishop Irenae, uh, the Bishop of uh, Britain, of London, and Western Europe for the Russian Orthodox Church outside of Russia. Let me uh, read this uh, prayer request to you. To the flock and all concerned persons concerning the persecution of Christians in the Ukraine, conscience does not permit me to remain silent over the grave and new injustices being wrought in the sacred land of Ukraine, adding sorrow upon sorrows as the grief of war is now conjoined with the tragedy of the most extraordinary and heartless persecution of Christians taking place in many parts of the country. While such persecution has been a reality already for many years, it has reached a pitch in recent days with new injustices being enacted in flagrant violation of Ukrainian law and international conventions on human rights. In the present season of Great Lent, all Christians are called to examine their hearts and consciences and to discern what is good and what is sinful within themselves and in the world around them. In such a period of tragedy, this is all the more essential. Our position against the war presently being waged between Russia and Ukraine has been clear from the outset. Bloodshed is evil. Warfare is always a sign of man's degradation. And the current war, which forces brother to draw his own brother's blood and pits Orthodox Christians against fellow Orthodox Christians, ought to be opposed by all those of Christian conscience. I renew my appeal for all clergy and faithful of our Diocese of Great Britain and Western Europe to continue in the path of aid that has been exemplified so powerfully among you since the war began. Continue operating food banks in the parishes to aid refugees. Continue to raise funds and material supplies for those suffering in Ukraine itself. Continue to welcome refugees from the war into your communities, homes, and schools and hearts. Continue to show love and piety towards all who are suffering. Work for peace in all things. Pray without ceasing for the bloodshed to end. Yet we cannot permit the tragedy of war to excuse or render us blind towards the appalling persecutions taking place within Ukraine. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church, headed by the pious Metropolitan Onufri and his Brotherhood of Faithful Hierarchs and Clergy, strive for nothing but to worship God in peace and care for all the people of their homeland with open hearts and a simple, powerful faith. Yet in response to their apolitical love, they are receiving the most vicious attacks, attempts by outside entities to politicize church life by falsely linking the autonomous Ukrainian church, which is independent and not under the thumb of any foreign entities, to political, military, or state powers abroad is as false as it is malicious. Attempts to set up a new Ukrainian false church under the influence of a patriarchate in Turkey and flagrantly political in orientation, is deceptive and a wound to Christ and his flock. And in the current days, even the peace-loving monks of the Dormition Lavra in Kiev are being threatened with eviction. Having already been evicted from one part of the monastery just before the Nativity of Christ, the monks are now threatened with complete expulsion from the monastery grounds by the end of the present month. 
the incorrupt relics of the saints kept in the monastery, most of whom labored and toiled spiritually in Ukraine, are being referred to by government officers as, quote, museum exhibitions, unquote. Schismatic, false Orthodox individuals are being brought in to desecrate holy altars with profane, non-Orthodox rites in mockery of the church. Priests are being evicted from nearby parish churches. Peace-loving leaders of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church are being groundlessly, illegally sanctioned. Hierarchs are being intimidated with deprivation of citizenship and deportation. Seminarians with eviction from their schools and academies. And the faithful with the stripping away of their canonical church life. Brothers and sisters, the last time the world saw such heinous persecution of Christians, the last time we heard such blasphemous words and witnessed the promulgation of such lies and open hatred, was in the Soviet period, which I call all to remember was that of the fiercest persecution against Christians the world has ever witnessed, producing more martyrs for Christ in the 20th century than in nearly the whole of Christian history before it. Shall the world stand by now silently as the same begins again in the 21st? Can any human person, whatever his or her personal religious beliefs or political persuasion, claim to stand for peace in the face of war and at the same time pass over in silence the attacks and evils being undertaken against innocent Christians who have nothing to do with the war but are being made its victims in even greater degree by persecutions within their own homeland? The monks of the Lavra are not politicians. They are not enemies of any state or any people. They are humble individuals who have chosen a life of self-renunciation in following God, preserving the spiritual heritage of a site that has been sacred to Ukrainian Orthodox Christians and Orthodox all across the world for more than a millennium. They pray for all. They care for their fellow countrymen and pilgrims. They rise early in the morning to sing songs of praise to God who created the world in peace. They stay awake late into the night in long vigils, praying for that peace and the reign of God's mercy. I call upon all those with any means of acting to act in support of those being so unjustly persecuted before the eyes of the whole world. Continue to oppose the war and join to this goal the earnest need to stop these tragedies. Speak to your political representatives and make them aware of what is taking place and the need to put an end to it. Telephone your members of parliament, senators and congressmen. Speak in contexts where you yourselves can raise the awareness of such matters. Appeal to all and to any who will hear that peace must reign, freedom of religion must be protected, and the propagandist use of a tragic war to justify additional tragedies cannot be tolerated. To all pious Christians, above all, I exhort you to pray. Pray to our almighty God that he will work a miracle amongst his pious flock in Ukraine. Pray that he will strengthen Metropolitan Anufri and all the leaders of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. Pray that he will comfort the suffering faithful. Pray that they will feel the support of our love and openness of our hearts to be united to them in their suffering. And to the faithful children of this diocese, I instruct that every parish is to serve a moleben with an akathist hymn to the Mother of God. May God save his people and bless his inheritance. Dear ones, would you please add to your Lenten devotions? this week, especially in anticipation of the date that the Ukrainian state has required all of our monks in the great Lavra to be uh, gone and to leave uh, their home. Would you please pray that peace and reason would prevail and that this persecution would stop. May God hear our prayers and strengthen us to be faithful him, to him always. God be with you.